Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? It is yours truly, TJ Jones, the host of the State of the Saints podcast. And some of you probably thought about starting your very own sports podcast. Well, let me help you out. I want to tell you a little bit about Anchor. Now, if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's an easy way to make a podcast. And it's free. You don't have to worry about paying a bunch of money each month. There are creation tools to allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so you don't have to worry about that. So it can be heard on apps like Spotify and Apple Podcasts and many, many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. So go to anchorfm.com and start your very own podcast today. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. One more time. Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? It is yours truly, TJ Jones, the host of the State of the Saints podcast. And welcome to the Saints, the State of the Saints podcast uh, prediction show. I'm sorry I'm stumbling all over my words. Um, I'm kind of at a loss for words uh, for what I just saw, man. I just checked out that LSU-Mississippi State game. And, man, boy, LSU got some problems, man. All I can say is Miles Brennan is no Joe Burrow at all. I mean, who, man. But anyway, thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you for checking out the podcast. And want to give a special shout out to everyone that's looking at this podcast for the first time. This is the podcast that we talk New Orleans Saints. And we're going to be breaking down the Saints week three matchup between, I mean, against the Green Bay Packers in the Superdome on Sunday night. And uh, hopefully we get some better results than we did on Monday night uh, when the Saints lost to the Las Vegas Raiders. But let's go ahead and give a shout out to the chat here. Shout out to Tyra, Optimus, uh, Jerry, Saints fan 1021. We got Greg in here. We got Earl, Travis, uh, Jamal, uh, Joe, Dave. Thank you all very much. Uh, I'm looking at <laughs> I'm looking at Jamal right off the bat says LSU look like trash. No, LSU don't look like trash. Miles Brennan look like trash. I mean, look, I understand guys in college and stuff like that, and they're supposed to learn and develop, but that guy sucks, okay? I mean, for real, like that guy sucks. His decision-making sucks. Uh, you know, his aggression sucks. Captain check down. I mean, I, honestly, man, if, if LSU had a subpar quarterback, they would have won this game. Like, this dude right here is not a gamer. He's not a baller. That's the reason why a four-star athlete like himself coming out of high school spent four years on a bench. I mean, I completely understand that. Usually you'd be like, man, what's this dude doing? He four stars. Why he not on a why he why he uh decided to play on and sit on a bench all this time? But I completely understand. I completely understand why this dude is on a bench. 100 percent suck. For real. Like, I mean. <laughs> This dude, like, was missing so many wide-open people, too, which is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I know this is the State of the Saints podcast, but, look, I like LSU, too. That was pathetic, absolutely downright pathetic. I mean, the defense looks trash as well. I ain't going to lie about that. Bo Pelini, I mean, whoo, man, y'all got to get together. I mean, it, I, I wasn't – like, honestly, this looked like – this looked like a Saints game on Monday night. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you got quarterbacks that can't turn around. You got uh, uh, offense going up and down the field. And you got a quarterback checking it down every five seconds. I mean, this looked just like a Saints game. <laughs> but, I mean, I mean, Miles Brennan, like, he is absolutely not Joe Burrow. Hey, oh, like 100. Like, who, bruh, like how? How, like, how did – the LSU Tigers coaching staff look at this guy and say, 
you were up next and was confident that this guy would be able to get the job done. I have absolutely no idea, but I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know how they're going to do it, but I'm telling you, like this dude got five games, uh, five L's on, on his record right now. I'm looking at right now. I, I guarantee you LSU will lose five games as a dude stated quarterback. He, he, he sucked. He's not good. You know, people were saying while well, I was saying that in the first half, I was on uh, social media talking about this. And I'm like, I mean, look, I don't need to see much. Like, honestly, I don't need to see much. I, I, I look at guys based on their decision making, what they do, throwing the ball down the field. I mean, this dude, like this dude can hit the back of a barn door. Like it, this was this this was pathetic. Absolutely. Downright. One hundred percent pathetic. Like, sorry, like, uh, I'm, I'm, I apologize that I'm talking about this, man. But I mean, as an LSU fan, I, I'm I, I am an LSU fan, and it's frustrating to watch this, man. After such great quarterback play last season, y'all put this garbage on the field. Like, come on, man, give me a break. But back to the New Orleans Saints, man. What are the New Orleans Saints going to do week three against the Green Bay Packers? Uh, you look at the Green Bay Packers right now. They're leading the NFL in offensive yards, uh, over 500 yards per game. Aaron Rodgers playing like a man possessed. You know it had a lot to do with the fact that the Green Bay Packers drafted Jordan Love in the first round, and they moved up to get him. So Aaron Rodgers kind of playing with a chip on his shoulder, feeling like he has something to prove. So he's been going out there willing and dealing and balling out. Uh, You look at the Green Bay Packers, they got a lot of weapons on this team. Uh, You got Devontae Adams, who is – doubtful for this game but you also have Marquez Vandez, uh Valdez Scantley you got him I mean you got so many other wide receivers that are part of this uh roster and not to mention on defense you got Zadarius Smith and Preston Smith uh rushing the quarterback so um how do I see this game going well the first off I can tell you the advantage of the New Orleans Saints the advantage of the New Orleans Saints in this game if they're going to get this W it has to be the end of the the middle of the field is going to have to be Jared Cook. This is a Jared Cook type game. The Green Bay Packers don't really have good linebackers. They really don't. They don't have linebackers, and they don't have a safety right now. And, and Savage, uh, he's young. He's he's a hard hitter, but you know what I'm saying? He, he kind of struggles in coverage right now. He, he's more like their version of a Marcus Williams. You know, I think that Jared Cook can get the best of that matchup. I think the Saints going to have to utilize the middle of the field so people like uh, Jared Cook and also uh, Josh Hill going to have to eat. And, and be on the lookout for Adam Troutman in this game, man. I'm interested to see how the Saints going to use him because I feel like the tight ends are going to be able to win this matchup. And also Alvin Kamara. I feel like Alvin Kamara uh, should be able to be successful in this game, catching a ball out of the backfield. Because even though the linebackers of the Green Bay Packers are OK, um, they're not like uh, some of the linebackers that the Saints have seen over the past couple of weeks, you know, in uh, in Middleton and, um, you know, in Littleton, excuse me, Littleton out there in, for the Raiders and also uh, Levante David and, and Devin White at linebacker. So I, I feel like the Saints should be able to utilize the field. Uh, on the outside, uh, you got King and, and you got Alexander. Uh, Alexander right now is ranked among the highest, uh, you know, cornerback rating uh, in the National Football League right now. He's the highest ranked cornerback in the league. Uh, when it comes to him covering his man, I think he has like a pro football focus score of like an 88 right now. So he's playing on a very high level. He's going up against Traquan Smith. So I don't know if Traquan Smith going to be able to win that battle. But it, I mean, I think King King is a good, decent cornerback, but it's not like you can't go out there and, and dominate that type of uh, that, that competition between him and Emmanuel Sanders. Uh, this is a game where Emmanuel Sanders has to step up you know this is a game where Emmanuel Sanders can come out there he can shine and and be that that option that Drew Brees needs him to be uh that that is what I feel like the offense is going to do defensively uh I feel like the fact that Devontae Adams is not going to play in this game uh that leads uh you know Marshawn Lattimore Jack Rabbit Jenkins to go out there and man up on some of these other wide receivers that don't have the skill set of Devontae Adams but once again when you have a guy that's not an elite wide receiver playing uh, in this game, I wonder what Marshawn Lattimore is going to do in this situation. You know, we know that Marshawn Lattimore likes the competition. He likes to put himself in the upper echelon of cornerbacks 
So what he does is he goes out there and shut down elite receivers. But what happens when you're not going up against elite receivers? What happens when you're going up against middle of the road guys that nobody really looks at to be their guy? Okay. I mean, what, what do you do then? But I do think this, you know, when you look at somebody like Valdez Scanley, a guy that's like six five, six six, he's going out there, he's balling out right now. Um, we seen that the Saints had issues with Darren Waller, who is also six foot six. I'm wondering what the Saints are gonna be able to do to stop him. I can see the Green Bay Packers putting him, uh, lining up him, him in a slot and letting him eat just like Darren Waller did. So the Saints gonna have to be very, very careful. I mean, it's out right now, you know what I'm saying? The the, the offensive of uh, uh, offensive coordinators of different teams are looking at this defense and they're looking to exploit the middle of the field. So these guys got to be ready. These guys got to be motivated or you're going to see the same type of game that you've seen last week. Uh, also, uh, with the uh, defensive side of the ball, look, you got to get pressure on Aaron Rodgers. Uh, my my advice to you would not be to blitz him. Uh, you know, I don't think that's a good thing. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is one of the best quarterbacks when it comes to, uh, you know, picking up the blitz and getting the ball out of his hand on time. Uh, the thing about it is, what you want to do is you want to try to get pressure with your front four on Aaron Rodgers. Um, you want to make sure that you're trying to get pressure on Aaron Rodgers. It's not like his offensive line is just all world or something like that. You start getting pressure on Aaron Rodgers, he starts to get frustrated, and, and then he starts to, like, you know, flop down on the ground. You know, this is the closest thing, in my opinion, to a, a LeBron James type player. You know what I'm saying? Like, no disrespect to LeBron. Yeah, he does have great talent, but let's just be real, folks. Nobody flopping like LeBron right now. You know what I'm saying? I know y'all seen that elbow by uh, Murray, you know what I'm saying, that just grazed his head and he looked like he got shot. That's the same way with Aaron Rodgers. You know, Aaron Rodgers, if he feels like it's not his day, if he feels like the offensive line is not going to block for him, it gets in his head and he just shuts it down. So the New Orleans Saints, if they can get pressure on Aaron Rodgers, that would be fine. And also you got to be careful of the X factor of the Green Bay Packers, and that is Aaron Jones. Uh, Aaron Jones, is playing out his mind right now. He had double-digit uh, touchdown, well, not double-digit touchdowns, but he had two touchdowns in, in two straight games. Uh, you know, he, I think he had three, as a matter of fact, in his last game. He's a guy that can catch the ball out of the backfield. He's a guy that can run between the tackles, and he is their answer uh, to our Alvin Kamara. You know, he is their Alvin Kamara. So Aaron Jones is a guy that can do a lot of great things. So this is a, a matchup, Demario Davis versus uh, Aaron Jones. Uh, Demario Davis is going to have to win. This is going to be his bread and butter. This is the reason why, you know, we decided to extend Demario Davis so he can go up against guys like this. But the Saints got to be careful, you know, because this guy can take over a game and, and make it very, very tough on defenses. So you got to be able to neutralize Aaron Jones. You got to make sure that you're getting pressure on Aaron Rodgers. My suggestion, once again, wouldn't be blitzing. And these cornerbacks, they got to have a better showing than they did last week. And the safeties, I mean, you got to be able to tackle. You got to wrap up. You got to make sure that you, you get, you know, your arms around these guys and bring them down to the ground. There was too much missed tackling going on last week on Monday Night Football. I, I didn't know if the Raiders had Orville Redenbacher butt on them or they just had some motor oil on them. They were just slipping all up off, uh, you know, all up off the Raiders. I, I really just don't get it. But you got to wrap these guys up. You got to make sure that you're tackling. And Malcolm Jenkins, uh, I need a better showing out of him. Uh, last week, I mean, it was just awful. God awful. I mean, the first game that he played, when he played the Buccaneers, it was a really good game for him. The second game, not so much. I'm looking for the tight end of the Green Bay Packers to, to eat in this game because, you know, they're going to try to uh, take advantage of Malcolm Jenkins, especially after what they saw uh, Darren Waller do to him. So look for the Green Bay Packers to try to take advantage of the middle of the field, which is the same soft spot. And, uh, you know, maybe they'll be able to get some plays. Uh, I also look at the Green Bay Packers. I look at the Green Bay Packers trying to start fast and trying to really put the pedal to the metal at the beginning of the game, probably go up by uh, two touchdowns. Because right now, the question on everybody's mind is, can Drew Brees be able to deliver a team back? Because everybody's saying that, you know, Drew Brees can't get the ball down the field. A lot of nickel and diamond, a lot of check down Charlie and going. So, they feel like if they can go ahead and get two touchdowns on that, you know, then maybe, you know, it, it, it'll work in their favor because 
all you have to do now is just worry about, you know, bending but not breaking. You know, let Drew Brees get the ball down the field, you know, on those close intermediate routes. Uh, if his wide receivers are fighting for extra yards, so be it. But just don't get, you know, nothing, what they say, nothing cheap, nothing deep. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, ain't, you know, nothing going deep. So, as long as you don't do nothing cheap. <laughs> and also look for the Smith brothers, Preston Smith and Zadaria Smith, to play on the inside. Okay. I mean, this is no secret, folks. Uh, the inside of the Saints offensive line is the weakest. I can see them putting Preston Smith and Zadarius Smith on the inside, going up against the guards of the New Orleans Saints, trying to win those matchups and bringing the pressure right up the middle. So this better be one of those games where Sean Payton better be able to adjust with this. And my uh, and my uh, suggestion to this would be running a football, running a football with Alvin Kamara, running a football with Latavius Murray, okay? Work on those draw plays, you know what I'm saying? Let that pressure get into the face, you know what I'm saying, of Drew Brees, and then let Drew Brees hand the ball off for a halfback draw. You know, take advantage of the pressure that they're going to try to bring to New Orleans Saints. And also, you know what I'm saying, just try to take advantage of the running game and the fact that, you know, their their defensive line, for the most part, are very horrible when it comes to stopping a run. I mean, we've seen them against the San Francisco 49ers in the NFC Championship game. Uh, the game this season, you know, when they played uh, the Minnesota Vikings, Dalvin Cook was pretty successful. Uh, the game last week against the Detroit Lions, Adrian Peterson was a tad bit successful. So I, my my suggestion would be to run the football in this game, uh, control the time of possession, man, throw the ball when you need to throw the ball. Let's just be honest, we don't really have too many playmakers out there. And if you do, they haven't been acting like playmakers. So let's just go ahead and try to run the football uh, throw the football, you know, when need be to, in order to move the chains. And let's just try to get up out of here, man, and just add on another week closer to getting Michael Thomas back where we can go out there and maybe the offense will look a whole lot better. But I'd like to hear from you all, man. What do y'all think about the game? Uh, what do you think uh, the Saints need to do in order to, uh, you know, stop the Green Bay Packers from winning this game? Tramal says Marcus Williams still trying to tackle high. Yeah, man, I mean, at the first game against Tampa Bay, he did a pretty good job tackling. I don't know what happened in this game. I really don't. But I think I, I think I do have a solution to that, Tremo. I feel like the reason why he tries to tackle high is because he spends most of his time trying to rip the ball out of, out the uh, out the offensive player's hand instead of trying to wrap him up and put him to the ground. He's trying to play hero ball. And sometimes you just got to take that L, man, and fight uh, and fight to live another day. Uh, yes, TJ, they were not wrapping up. No, nah, they weren't wrapping up at all, man. I mean, I, I know what was going on out there. Uh, he was getting burnt like a biscuit. Yeah, yeah, straight up, you know. I don't know exactly what you're talking about getting burnt like a biscuit. I'm pretty sure it's Malcolm Jenkins, but definitely. Yeah, he definitely gets smoked like brisket out there. Uh, secondary about to see a lot of action. Well, I hope not, man, because that means that the offense is not being able to get the ball down the field and it's a lot of three and outs. And I don't want to see that, man. I really don't. Hate to break it, but he can't throw it like he used to. I mean, Diego, I mean, you really, honestly, you're not telling us anything we don't already know, my brother. So you shouldn't feel bad or uh, feel like you're breaking this news to us. I mean, everybody know that Drew Brees can't throw the ball down the field like he once did. But it's up to the Saints offensive coaching staff in order for them to put the Saints in position so they could get those plays down the field. Rather than using Drew Brees, asking them to be a little bit more aggressive or getting somebody else in the game. Uh, if we lose, I blame Sean Payton the most. Well, you know, shame on Sean Payton last week that you didn't use Taysom Hill more in that game. Uh, shame on Sean Payton for not being able to use most of your playmakers. I feel like he didn't get Deontay Harris more involved in the game. I don't feel like he got Taysom Hill involved in the game at all. And I really feel like you didn't help, uh, you know, by by making Jared Cook a nine fact in that game. I don't know what's going on. For the exception of Alvin Kamara, that's like the only playmaker the Saints had that actually stood out in this game. Trey Quan stepped up, but he's not one of the Saints playmakers. And indeed is Emmanuel Sanders at this point. Emmanuel Sanders was a playmaker on another team, but not for the Saints right now. I'm excited to see Drew beat the odds. Well, I hope he does. You know, like I hope he go out there and beat the odds and I hope they beat the Packers. You know, I'm I mean, I just think that uh, I think that he has to go out here and have a good performance because if he don't, then what we're hearing right now is going to be amplified. And you think that you're tired of hearing about it now, it's going to get even worse. 
I'm scared of Breeze throws. I'm not I'm not scared of him throwing. You know, I just wish that he'll be a little bit more aggressive when he throws. If he do that, we're gonna lose, Tyra. Uh I know. Let's see. Uh seems like when we the underdogs, we perform well. That's true. You know, when when nobody think that we're gonna win or we go up against elite competition, that's when we play our best. But when we're going up against subpar competition, a mid, a, a bottom of the barrel competition, we don't play good at all. And we are just allow those guys to stay around to the third and fourth quarter. And then they're looking around like, hey, man, you know, we got a chance to win this thing. Peyton says uh, he can't throw downfield. Let's just keep it real. I love Drew, but he can't stress the field. It's time for him to step aside. Well, I don't know if it's time for him to step aside just yet. I mean, he, he has had. Uh, some games where you're questioning that, but I need to see a little bit more of that for me to come to that conclusion right now, you know, but I mean, the arm strength definitely isn't there no more. Aaron says a lot of the check downs, I feel is just showing play calling. I feel like if Sean will let breeze loose, he will, uh, well, he will be much more effective with a run game. Aaron, I mean, there's some validity to that, you know, uh, but at the same time, we all know that drew breeze, uh, you know, if he goes into a play, he's not going to try to force the ball in there. So the ball may be designed to go up the field, but if he don't feel like that matchup is there, he's going to check it down to Elvin Kamara, or he's going to check it down to Latavius Murray or Ty Montgomery or what have you, or the tight end. That's just what he does, man. I don't think it has anything to do with Sean Payton in particular. You know, Sean Payton can say, man, I want this deep post down here to Emmanuel Sanders, but if Drew don't get the ball to Emmanuel Sanders, I feel like he can't get it down to him. I feel like Emmanuel Sanders not going to win the matchup, which I feel like that's a spit in the face of, of a wide receiver, in my opinion. You know, like if you see me, I got one or two steps on the, on the cornerback, please throw me the football. Have the confidence in me that I'm going to come down with that football. I just feel like Drew Brees don't believe in his wide receivers to a point where he feel like if he just throw it in traffic, then he's going to come down and get it. The only person I feel like he has that type of confidence in is Michael Thomas. You know, Michael Thomas, if he triple covered, he's going to try to throw the ball to him, you know, but you, know, you got to have confidence in your receivers, man. You can't too much care about your stats or turning the ball over sometimes. Cause I feel like this, you know, if you throw the ball 30, 40 yards down the field and it end up being intercepted, that's, that's nothing but like a, that's nothing but a punt to me. Right. Like if you throw the ball down the field and you, you, you throw it like 30, 40 yards, right. And it's a 50 50 ball, and a defender come down with it. That's a punt. You still on the op, most likely you're on the opposite side of the 50. You know what I'm saying? They, they in their own territory. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's the way I look at it. So I don't understand why you can't be aggressive in that regards. So I, I don't know if it's just him. I, I don't think it's Sean Payton. I think it's Drew Brees being conservative at times, too. If y'all saying uh, no to Antonio Brown, then who's better than him? Uh, I'm over Antonio Brown. Uh, I don't think Antonio Brown would be a good fit for this organization, straight up. And if you're talking about him not being able to get Emmanuel Sanders to football, uh, <laughs> what, do, what do you think that he going to do with uh, Antonio Brown? You think Antonio Brown going to change the luck of Drew Brees who can't get the ball down the field? And we all know that Antonio Brown is a guy that, that stretches the offense. So all you got is an extra guy that – Unfortunately, Drew can't get it to right now. Uh, Jerry says, saw a news article Friday talking about Ken Crawley. I said, hell to the no, no. Hot garbage. Yeah, I seen that, man. I seen that they called uh, Ken Crawley in. But, you know, I, I, I look at it like this. It said that they called him in, but they didn't say why. I mean, we have to keep in mind, you know, Ken Crawley did play for the Saints. You know, I'm pretty sure the, you know, Ken Crawley, Woody was there about two or three years. So, man, y'all know how it is, man. You, you be at a facility. I mean, you, you know, you got your locker, you got all your stuff, and sometimes you might leave some stuff behind, you know, and maybe the Saints, you know, they were dealing with some COVID-19 type stuff. You know, they were trying to stretch these lockers. They were trying to remove some stuff. And maybe some Ken Crawley stuff still was left behind. Maybe a hat, maybe a shirt, maybe a pair of cleats. So they decided to call them in in order for him to pick his stuff up. Because I don't want to believe that the Saints called in Ken Crawley to solicit help <laughs> from Ken Crawley. Like, I don't want to believe that. What can Ken Crawley possibly do for the New Orleans Saints, huh? I mean, honestly, what, what, 
what what are they gonna do? What they gonna put them on on scout team? You know, to show the to, to show people how it looks to get smoke down the field or something like that. I mean, what really can Ken Crawley do for the New Orleans Saints? I feel believe that you got a young guy like Keith Washington out of West Virginia, who I heard was playing pretty doggone good in training camp. You're not gonna tell me this young kid can't go up in there and give you the same type of production. No, not even really knowing the playbook right now as Ken Crawley. I, I fail to believe that. But I, I I just think that maybe he left some stuff behind. The Saints trying to do some fall cleaning. Uh, they're trying to just make sure, you know, they get all that stuff out of there. They're stretching out locker rooms. Guys not, uh, you know, centered next to each other in the locker rooms anymore. They got to, you know, have them six feet apart. So maybe, you know, Ken Crawley stuff along with some other Saints players, old Saints players, uh, maybe this stuff was getting in the way. So the Saints called up Ken Crawley and so many other players to come and get their stuff. Because I don't want to believe. I don't want to believe the Saints did nothing that foolish. I, I really don't. Uh, get Taysom Hill involved in the game. I agree with that. I definitely agree. Uh, no Brown, man. Wake up. I'm over there, man. No Antonio Brown. Like, what's the point of getting another wide receiver when you got a quarterback that can't even get it to the, his own receiver right now? A head coach asked uh, to be willing to pull a plug on the aging quarterback. Belichick gave Brady two seasons and moved on from him. It's time for Sean Payton to have, uh, yeah, it's uh, what it's called, Cajon, or cojones. Have his cojones and make that decision on Breeze. It's time. Well, let me tell you something, man. These guys are joined at the hip. Sean Payton loved Drew Breeze and vice versa. And I just can't see Sean Payton just cutting – ties with drew Brees like that you know it's gonna have to take something catastrophic folks it's gonna t- have to take more than him just being captain check down in order for sean payton to get him uh out of here it's, it's not gonna happen uh, it's not gonna happen like drew Brees gotta go out there and just gotta stank it up i mean they gotta be getting blown out but i mean for the most part they still competitive in games you know the only argument that we have is when they up you know can they stay up can they, you know, can they keep the same type of momentum throughout the game, game in, game out? So as long as he's still competitive out there and still competing, I can't see that happening. It will have to take like Drew Brees throwing like four, five interceptions in a game or something like that. And it just, I mean, maybe like a like a Miles Brennan type performance or something like that. You know, the way that Miles Brennan old garbage self played today out there at LSU. And I don't feel bad about saying that because he over the age of 21 now. You four years, you've been sitting on the bench that time. I'm pretty sure you red shirt, shirted, so you about 22, 23. So I don't feel bad for calling this guy trash because he is. He's not good. He horrible. What was uh, Ed Ogeron thinking? I, I really don't know. Like, you couldn't get no other transfer that came from another school? I mean, Mississippi State did. They got the dude from Stanford. Maybe you should have went out there and tried to recruit the guy from Stanford. I mean, but anyway. Man, I'm still upset with that. He had to play like Miles Brennan for the next couple of weeks in order for them to get rid of him. Molly Maul, I see you. Tyra uh, kissing at school. Uh, say, uh, let's say we bench Drew. How is it going to help the defense get off the field on third down? That's a good point. That's a good point. Well, I, okay, let me play devil's advocate here. You know, let me, let me, let me see. Let me see if I can, how I can put this. Well, I put it to you like this, right? If, if the offense can be able to sustain drives, get the ball down the field, you know, control the time possession, it will make the defense, you know, not, you know, have to go off on the field three and out, three and out, three and out every single time. You know, it, it wouldn't have to be that way, you know. So, you know, it's about complimentary football. If you keep on getting three and outs, and the defense got to get back on the field before they even get some Gatorade in their system. The best defense is going to wear down. I don't care what your defense is. It's going to wear down. So, you know, maybe that'll help in that regards, but I just don't think that you were just going to have a quarterback come off the bench, uh, you know, like, I don't know. I don't know. Like he uh, Willie Beeman or something like that and just go take the lead by storm. I just don't, you know, so – Venture Breeze is uh, one ridiculous, two not going to happen. Taysom needs at least 25% of the snaps under center. I don't know about 25% of the snaps, but he definitely needs his fair share. I say about at least six to seven per game. You know what I'm saying? Like at, at least, at least six to seven per game. You know, I don't think they need to have a 25%. I think that's a little bit much, but um, 
They need to do something. They need to implement him in some type of way. Ken Crawler was uh, taking shots on IG story uh, with Florida Lee and playing view the other day. Well, good for him. But if he does play for the Saints, I'm pretty sure it's just going to be on special teams because there's no way in the world Ken Crawley should be on nobody football field playing nobody corner <laughs> on a consistent base. TJ, in your opinion, why didn't the Saints draft another quarterback after draft than Garrett Grayson in 2015? Because Sean Payton don't have the patience to develop a, a, a young quarterback. I mean, just think about it, folks. When have you ever seen Sean Payton draft a, a young quarterback? You know, even with Tommy Stevens. I mean, he drafted Tommy Stevens. Well, what does Tommy Stevens play? Tommy Stevens plays uh, t- uh, tight end. So he doesn't have the patience. That's why he goes out here and go get veteran quarterbacks because he wants guys that already know the speed of the NFL and he don't feel like he have to work as hard as you have to you, to get a young quarterback, get him acclimated to the NFL world, the, the speed of defenses and stuff like that. I just don't feel like he has the patience. He'd rather go out here and go get a Teddy Bridgewater. He'd rather go out here and get a Taysom Hill. He'd rather go out here and get a Jameis Winston than to go out here and try to get himself a young quarterback, a guy who is his guy that he can mold in his image. I don't know why. I guess, like I said, I, I don't think he has the patience for a young quarterback because he, he feels like, you know, in order for them to get better, you know, sometimes they're going to start off being really bad, you know, before they have to get really good. But, I mean, look at Andy Reid. I mean, Andy Reid, he got – well, he got Patrick Mahomes. He let Alex Smith start the first – he let him start the first year. Then around week 15, 16 or something like that, Patrick Mahomes played in a couple of games. And then they kindly traded Alex Smith to the Washington football team. You know, at the time they were the Redskins. So – and now you have Patrick Mahomes taking the league by storm. So are you saying that maybe Andy Reid's a better coach than you? I mean, he could be. And to read developing young quarterbacks and turn them into MVPs and Super Bowl MVPs. So I don't, I, I, that's the only logical explanation I have is that Sean Payton don't have the patience to try to develop a young quarterback. Man, let Taysom air that thing out. <laughs> we need another Taysom throw uh, yeah, to denote like the wild card game. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, we need to get him on the field a little bit more and not just throwing the ball down the field, but. For, for us to just get him involved, man. I just feel like man, it's like the whole dynamic of the offense changed when he out there. Like even the biggest Drew Brees supporter got to admit that. Like when, when Taysom Hill is out there, you, you can see it's like it, it's like you can see a big play going to come. The explosiveness going to happen. You know, like yeah, he just brings that dynamic. At least Jameis and Taysom will threaten defenses with the deep ball. I agree. Optimus says Saints can win this game, get Cooks and Sanders involved early, run the football with Kamara and Murray. Yeah, you're going to have to run the football with Kamara and Murray because I feel like that's the best matchup right now. You know, looking at looking at the Saints, them throwing a the football, if they run a the football, I think they should be okay. And I, I think that that's the, soft, that's the soft part of the defense for the Green Bay Packers is they run defense. Not very good. Tyra says, yes, sir. Uh, Key says, this is why they will continue to not make the Super Bowl. Yep. If you keep on parading Drew Brees out here like he, Drew Brees of 2008, yeah, you're not. Will our O-line be able to create a wall of farts around Brees this week? I hear the Packers have sensitive noses, so a wall of farts uh, <laughs> will insulate Brees a lot. Well, let me let me say you this. Um, I feel like the Saints – uh offensive line need to get a little bit better you know because right now you know they're getting pushed back to breeze and like i said i feel like preston smith and zadarius smith they're gonna put them right in the middle they're gonna put them right in the middle and they're gonna let them rush right up the, the a gap right into the face of drew Brees. and they're gonna have to they're gonna dare drew Brees to try to throw the ball from out of the pocket which he is not comfortable doing my pops who uh incarcerated say we need to run the ball and get Sanders involved. Everybody can see that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, look, they definitely need to run the football and you got to get Emmanuel Sanders involved some way, somehow. I, I really don't know why they don't, but they got to get them involved some way, somehow. And 
I don't know why, man. I think it's just a trust factor. Saints should get Kaepernick a call. He been out of the league for a while, uh, but he could throw down the field, and he was one of the first running quarterbacks everybody is so hype about now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, he definitely would be a good choice, you know what I'm saying, for the Saints to take a look at. I don't see nothing wrong with Colin Kaepernick as a quarterback. He had a down season for the 49ers, you know, when um, Greg Romans was the uh, was the head coach. Uh, but Greg Roman, he was not a head coach. I mean, he was a defensive line coach who got awarded the head coaching job after Jim Harbaugh left, you know, which this guy had absolutely like no experience in, in that at all, being a head coach. This was not a good fit. So I feel like uh, Colin Kaepernick suffered. And that's the one season that everybody, you know, hang their hat on. Oh, he wasn't good. Oh, he 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 wasn't good enough to play in the league. Like, give me a break, man. How many guys we see suck year after year? Don't do absolutely nothing and be on somebody's team as a backup or get an opportunity to start in the game. So it's no excuse, man. I would say, yeah, he's a guy that you can look at, but we all know that that's not going to happen. So it is what it is. <laughs> we are going to uh, need pressure up the middle to win this game. Aaron Rodgers is not the quarterback you want to see have time to throw. I agree with that. DJ Swearinger should have, uh, should be starting over PJ Williams. I agree with that too. I don't understand it, but you know, I hate to say it, but like I said uh, on, on social media, you know, there's an old saying, they said, those that don't remember their history are doomed to repeat it. So if you keep on parading the same people out there that's causing you hardships every single time, knowing that they can't cover, knowing they're getting beat, knowing they knowing they can't stop anybody, that's your fault. So let your stubbornness go ahead and let these guys go out here and play. And you know what's going to happen? Your team is going to fall uh, victim to the same fate over and over and over again. And, it's, and you'll have nobody to blame but yourself. We have trouble running the ball because other teams crowd the box because of downfield play from us. Yeah, because they don't respect the, the deep passing game. They don't respect Drew Brees. They don't respect his passing game. Let me take that back. They respect Drew Brees as a quarterback and what he's done in the league, but they don't respect his arm talent as of right now. So they just go ahead and put seven, eight in the box, and they know that he's not going to throw it uh, over their head. So, you know, they all they do is sit on routes. That's That's all they do. Yeah, that's the truth, folks. You know, that's all that's all defense do against the Saints now. They they sit on routes. Adam Troutman, why isn't he more involved? Because of Sean Payton. Because of Sean Payton. Sean Payton don't want to get him involved. That that's the only reason why he's not involved right now. We can't be getting those 13 uh yard drives. Uh you I guess you mean 13 play drives. Uh look, ain't nothing wrong with a 13 play drive. You know, ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, that means that you control the time of possession and, you know, the clock is steady ticking. So that's that's pretty good. The thing about it is those 13 play drives when you down by two touchdowns, you definitely don't want that. You don't want that, especially late in games. Now, maybe early in games, not too bad, okay? If it's like the second quarter and you get a 13 play drive and you up, you down by two touchdowns, fine. But if like the fourth quarter, and it's like, you know, nine minutes or something like that, or six minutes, uh, you need to hurry up and score quick. I hate to say this, but check this out. Breeze and Brady are holding the uh, the franchise's hostage uh, in a hostage situation on stats. Brady won't retire because of Breeze, and Breeze won't retire because of Brady. Um, there's a lot of people that feel the same way you do, Dwayne. I, I can't come out here and say that. You know, I think that it has a lot to do with the love of the game. I think these guys just love to play football. You know, I mean, you could ask the question, what, you know, what in the hell are they still playing for? Like, what do they have to prove? They don't have to prove anything. You know, I don't know if they just want to beat the eyes or defy the eyes or whatever. You know, they ain't got nothing to play for, especially Brady. I mean, you got more Super Bowl championships than any other quarterback in history. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you're the, arguably the greatest quarterback of all time. What are you playing for? So. So a lot of people feel that way. They're trying to play the waiting game against each other. So I don't know. But if that's the case, then they definitely need to step aside. <coughs> uh, Davenport is questionable. Yeah, I heard that, man. So most likely he's probably going to play. He's going he gonna to be on a snap count. Davenport <laughs> is ceramic. Uh, he needs to sit to the side for a while. Uh, 
look, I just I just need this dude to be consistent. If he comes back, please, please come and stay back, okay? Please stay, all right? Sky never played in a playoff game where he's going into his third season. So uh, hopefully he plays, man, and play for all, all season long. Please, pretty please. Side-to-side side runs won't tie you to Packers defense in order to get the passes, the passing going. Yeah, I, I mean, look, them come, going out of the pocket, them going out of the pocket, uh, extending plays, uh, which the Saints won't do because of Drew Brees. Drew Brees don't really run out of the pocket. And definitely, like you said, those halfback tosses. Now, I, I will say this, Ernest, they might work in this game uh, due to the fact that the linebackers of – the Green Bay Packers aren't as athletic as the linebackers of, of the teams that we just saw the first two weeks. So you might see some success on those halfback tosses, uh, and you might see some uh, success in the screen game. Coach Payton keep trying to for a square peg into a round hole. I guess you mean trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. Uh, I just think that he's stubborn. You know, I just that's that's the way that I feel about Sean Payton. I like Sean Payton a lot. But if Sean Payton continuously runs this team the way that he's been running, we're going to start having to ask questions about him as a head coach. And I know that sounds crazy. Oh, it's 13 and 3, 13 and 3 for the last two seasons, one more games in the last three seasons. But I just feel like that's the reason why he feel like nobody should be able to tell him nothing. You know, he feel like he got everything under control. But I, I mean, I hate to say it. Yeah, we got three division titles. The Saints have three division titles. They won the South. But what else have you won, bro? You know, the only thing I'm telling you, man, I've said this before. Sean Payton is a Super Bowl championship from being the modern day Marty Schottenheimer. That's that's all he is. Like Marty Schottenheimer was a really great head coach, right? He was great for the Cleveland Browns. He was great for the Kansas City Chiefs. He was great for the San Diego Chargers. Had them got had them teams winning double digit wins. NFC, I mean, AFC championship games, never been to a Super Bowl, never won nothing. And that's what Sean Payton would have been if it weren't for that Super Bowl back in 2009. Here's a guy that think he knows everything, a guy that's too cocky and arrogant to actually go out here and take the time out to get all the rest of these players that you draft involved. Like, who goes out there and just draft a receiver because you feel like he's a good blocker? And that's all you don't call no other plays for this guy for exception of him being in a blocking game. Like, who the hell do you think you are? You know what I'm saying? Like, look, I feel like this. I, I said this before. If I was a wide receiver and I got drafted by the Saints and I'm looking at this, this play sheet and I'm looking like I ain't got no play for me except for me blocking and, and being a chip so Michael Thomas can get a quick slant. Now, I'm a team player and all, but damn, can a brother get some plays? Can a brother get some play calls for him, you know? And I just feel like if he doesn't feel like you're a part of his of his little group or he feels like you're not one of his guys, then <clears throat> he, he just don't pay you any mind. And I think that's the downfall of the New Orleans Saints. The fact that he wants to continuously live vicariously through Drew Brees, because let's just be real, Sean Payne was a coach for the Chicago Bears during the replacement era. When, when the NFL was on strike, he, he was quarterbacking for the Chicago Bears as a replacement quarterback, and he sucked. He wasn't good. And then you look at somebody like Drew Brees, so when he calling those plays and Drew Brees throwing a ball down the field, it's almost like, oh, I'm throwing this ball down the field. And now it reached a point where Drew Brees' success is conjoined to his success. So when Drew Brees goes into the Hall of Fame, they're going to be like, well, who was uh, Drew Brees' head coach all those years? Why is Sean Payton? So maybe Sean Payton need to be looked at and going into the Hall of Fame. That's the way that he, that's the way that he looks at this right now. It's all about patent stats. It's all about credibility. It's all about Drew Brees. You know what I'm saying? Breaking this record and this record because it's conjoined to him. But I'm telling you right now, you ain't winning a damn thing if you continuously play this game like you've been playing over the last couple of weeks. They won the first game because the defense got a turnover and they were playing really well. You lost the second game because basically you couldn't get any turnovers and the defense played like high garbage. So you can continuously go ahead and try to parade Drew Brees out here and try to avoid the fact that he's not the same quarterback as he once was and you cannot get these other quarterbacks involved and you can try not to get people like Taysom Hill that can give you a little bit of explosiveness and you can try to not use Latavius Murray 
all you want to. And you can talk about all these different exotic plays all you want to. But when it comes to the playoffs, when it comes to going out there, do or die, you're going to continuously die because you don't want to change. So let them do it. Let them do it. But it's always going to be the same. The Saints going to suffer the same fate every single time. As long as Sean Payton can't get out of his own way. Uh, TJ Ears, thank you very much for the $2. Says you got me uh, covered like a good friend should. Props. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, TJ Ears, for the $2. I appreciate that. You know, got to put the headphones on. Uh, help me uh, block out the noise and also be able to hear people when, you know, if they were to call in or something like that. But mostly it just kind of helps me uh, keep everything kind of bottled up. Uh, let's see. Uh, Joe Horn. Saw the writing on the wall. <laughs> I mean, Joe Hahn was old. I mean, if we talking about if we talking about uh, him leaving, I mean, he was just up there. The uh, Super Bowl saved Peyton from being considered an average head coach. Yep, I'm telling you, man, he would be known as Martin Marty Scheidenheimer if he if he didn't win that Super Bowl. I'd be stealing bikes from the bike rack <laughs> at middle school. The parts sell for a lot on Craigslist. <laughs> Tara, uh, thank you very much for that information. <laughs> Lights card said TJ preach is the truth. Uh, Tyra Smith, who that? Who that? Defense has to play better this week, and we can't have uh, 10 plus penalties. Yeah, man, we can't have 10 plus penalties. We can't have guys just making mistakes and like I said, man, if you're a quarterback right now in the NFL, why wouldn't you want to throw the ball down the field? Why wouldn't you want to throw the football down the field? Like, seriously, why wouldn't you want to throw the football down the field on the New Orleans Saints when you know two things going to happen? It's rather your wide receiver going to catch the football or it's going to be a pass interference. If I was a quarterback, that's that's the first thing I'd do. And I'm pretty sure Aaron Rodgers is going to be doing that all game. Watch. Watch how many, watch how many deep throws that Aaron Rodgers do. Even if the if it's 50 50 balls and maybe the ball ain't even um, catchable. Watch how many passes go down the field this week, folks. We are making boneheaded decisions and we don't go to the Super Bowl. You won't see me crying. We are our own worst enemy. I agree with that. I think any member of the Who That Nation would agree. Drink a little water. I think every member of the Who That Nation will agree that the Saints should have been in the Super Bowl at least once out of these last three seasons. You can argue and say twice, right? So, I mean, what has it been? It's been boneheaded decisions, late in games, boneheaded decisions, boneheaded game plans, teams not being coached up, teams not being motivated, teams not big making the adjustments. It, it's, always, it's always been self-inflicted wounds for the New Orleans Saints. Somebody said that, you know, they was talking about letting Drew Brees go. They used the example of Tom Brady, right? They used Tom Brady, been with the, the New England Patriots for 20 years. Belichick gave him two years and left. Look, I don't look, if you decide that you wanted to keep Drew Brees, that was fine. That was great. It's cool, right? You know what I'm saying? If that's what you want to do. But you have to be smart enough to know that, okay, there's a, there's a tad bit of decline here. So we need to find ways to be able to compensate for the decline, the tad bit of decline that, that Drew Brees is dealing with. They didn't do that, okay? They just constantly just parade him out there. They just parade him out there and have him out there throwing them five and them seven-yard uh, passes. And, and after like five or six yards, they're they hitting the ground. And You know what I'm saying? And, and wide receivers got to be on their pooper scoopers and scoop the ball up off the turf. Like, nah, man. Like, if you know that he, he, if he's not getting the ball down the field, you should be able to compensate for it. But I, I must say, folks, I, I'm I'm 100% confident when I say this. I really feel like Drew Brees coming back this season caught the Saints off guard. Like I really do. I feel like it really caught the team off guard. I feel like this team wanted to move forward with Teddy Bridgewater as the quarterback. I think that they, that's who they wanted to be, Drew Brees' successor. I think, like, if Drew Brees wouldn't have came back, they would have they would have put Teddy Bridgewater in that place. I, I feel like it's, it's not a coincidence that that uh, Teddy Bridgewater waited until Drew Brees made his decision for him to sign with the Carolina Panthers. Like, I really feel that way. I feel like 
Drew probably told them this was going to be last season. They was going to have Teddy Bridgewater in the wings. And Drew was like, well, I want to come back. And the Saints didn't want to just, you know, just stop, you know what I'm saying, and be like, nah, man, we can't have you back. We're going to go with Teddy. They didn't want to say that. So they allowed Teddy to go out there and get signed with Carolina. And they decided, Drew, you know what I'm saying, let Drew come back. I really felt like they kind of, he kind of caught them off guard with that. But, I mean, now that he's back, you got to find ways to use other guys to, you know, help him out. Yo, TJ, I love our ladies here in the chat and living up this, uh, living up the chat session. Much love who that ladies, who that baby. So, uh, Dwayne, give a shout out to all the ladies in the group. Man, shout out to all the ladies, the, me- the female members of the Who That Nation. Whoever doing this impersonation <laughs> crap needs to stop. Uh, Tyree, uh, he does that all the time. He takes uh, people's names and you know, they'll just cracks jokes and stuff like that. It's nothing serious, Tyree. It's just just funny games. He does that to everybody. Uh, Brandon, uh, TJ says, do you believe the Saints uh, should have signed Chris Harris cornerback instead of going after the David and Clowney? No, nah, I don't. Um, Look, I like Chris Harris. I think Chris Harris is a good uh, cornerback, but I, I really feel like some of his best days are behind him. Uh, I think the Los Angeles Chargers are getting like the tail end of Chris Harris. Um, and um, I don't know, man. I, I'm, I'd rather get a younger guy that can make some noise versus a guy who I feel like is kind of on borrowed time right now. TJ Jones, this is funny. AF, a.k.a. Fart Master, I be ripping them. Yeah, that, that's I be ripping them with the jokes. <laughs> Cries, uh, we need to go get Earl Thomas. I said, wait, wait a week or two before we we start saying that, my opinion. What do you think about Lattimore besides his rookie year? He has not been the lockdown guy. Um, I disagree with that. I, I, I believe he has been a lockdown guy. It just, he doesn't play he he doesn't play the same way every single week. He doesn't keep the same energy. You know, when he's going up against Mike Evans, Julio Jones, he game. Going up against Odell Beckham, he game. When he's going up against guys like, I don't know, uh, <laughs> Cooper Cup or uh, uh, what is it, uh, uh, Winsboro or, or, you know, like one of them other little slot guys, guys he's supposed to be guarding, he, he doesn't like look at those guys as a threat, so he doesn't play – he doesn't play the same way. So I feel like he's just inconsistent. I think he's a good player. He's just inconsistent. Saw a Saints fan page that is predicting that Wentz end up with the Saints after this year. What do you think about that? I, I think I, I mentioned that. I mentioned that too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind Carson Wentz playing for the Saints. I think Carson Wentz is a really good quarterback. I think the only issue is he plays in Philadelphia. And that is a very tough market to play in. Uh, they they love you one minute and they hate you the next. Okay, they they those people right there like that's the true definition of love hate. So I feel like if he was to come here to New Orleans, I think that he'll be much better than he would be out here in Philly. You know, and I think that uh, I think that they would have a better culture down here for him. But I think they eating him up in Philly, and not to mention I don't think his teammates really too much care for him as much. Uh, you know, they had that whole shrine for uh, Nick Foles uh, because, you know, a lot of uh, players inside the Philadelphia locker room like Nick Foles more than they like Carson Wentz. Even though Carson Wentz used to have Bible study at his house and all that kind of stuff, they felt like it was kind of like a front. It was talking about like how he just was fronting and you know, he seems like he's a good guy, but in reality, he's not. So, you know, a lot of mixed emotions about Carson Wentz, but I definitely wouldn't mind seeing him. Definitely wouldn't mind seeing uh I, I definitely wouldn't mind seeing him. You know, I, I wouldn't si- mind seeing uh another young uh quarterback out there, you know what I'm saying, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody like Sam Darnold or something like that. I wouldn't mind seeing him. You know, I feel like him playing in New York. I think this team suck. I think the fact that they can't never find a head coach. I think that that's uh something that there's always um kind of you know caused him a lot of hardship and, it's, and you know when you have those young quarterbacks I don't feel like it, it tells the whole story I don't feel like it tells the whole story um when they have bad coaches you know I think they get put in bad situations and and they you know and they end up like not playing well and also my guy Matthew Stafford man so 
you know, if we can't get nobody else, we can't keep Jameis, we can't keep Taysom. I definitely uh, would like my guy, uh, Brad, I mean, not Sam Bradford, Matthew Staff. <laughs> Lattimore doesn't look good, very average wide receiver because he feels like uh, uh, they are below, uh, below him. Yeah, I agree with that. that. He doesn't play up to the competition. He plays down when he plays against lower level competition. It's like he gets on a level. Swearinger needs to play this week. Bench P.J. Williams. I agree with that. Trevor Lawrence. Now, I don't think the Saints going to get Trevor Lawrence. I don't think they're going to be that. You know, you got to be pretty bad in order to be in the Trevor Lawrence sweepstakes. Uh, T.J., what's happening? Just left Nola. Had a uh, host, a puff and paint <laughs> in LGs. Okay, man. That's what's up, man. Shouts out to uh, Nola out there, man. Shouts out to LGs. Uh Let's see. I'm going to read a few more, folks. It's going to be a pretty short show tonight. Uh, we're not going to go too long. Uh, we're going to have a show uh, tomorrow afternoon, and we're going to have the show immediately following the game. So um, tomorrow's show, uh, I'm going to give uh, you all, you know, opportunity to be able to call in before the show as well as after the show. I mean, ap- before the game and after the game. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the chat and trying to talk at the same time. So sorry if I'm stumbling over words. Let's try to interview, if you can, a Detroit Lion media person for next week. Uh, You know, I try to do that if I can, man. But to be honest with you, um, I try to, you know what I'm saying, I try to do, like, different interviews. I try to reach out to people. Sometimes, you know, people are nice enough to come on the show. Uh, sometimes, you know, people just ignore, the, you know, ignore uh, my offer. I don't know what it is. Maybe they feel like, you know, it's not worth their time or whatever. But, you know, I'm appreciative of everybody I reach out to and they're nice enough to be a part of the show. So, I mean, I can try to, you know, get in touch with somebody for the Detroit Lions, but there's not going to be, be, you know, I'm not going to beg anybody. I ask for them to be on the show, but I'm not going to, you know, beg anybody to be on here. You know, I just try to, you know, extend invitations, you know. And like I said, man, you'll be amazed how many nice people they have out here. You know, that's nice enough to, uh, you know, do your show and stuff like that. So, but I'll give it a shot. Winston is better uh, than that Carolina boy anyway. You talk about uh, Bridgewater. Well, you may be right. Stay the Saints podcast. I got you on standby, TJ. Jerry Poor, who that? I don't think Davenport play tomorrow. I say he might be on the snap count. I say he might be on the snap count. But I will, before I go, give uh, my prediction on what I feel like the score is going to be tomorrow. Uh, I have the uh, Green Bay Packers uh, beating the New Orleans Saints tomorrow. That's right, folks. I got the Green Bay Packers beating the New Orleans Saints tomorrow by a score of 34 to 31. Uh, I feel like uh, the New Orleans Saints are going to be competitive, uh, but I just feel like Aaron Rodgers and the way they're playing right now, I'm going to give them the victory over the New Orleans Saints. And until I actually see some improvements, you know, I mean, why, why shouldn't I? You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, why shouldn't I pick? Why shouldn't I pick the Green Bay Packers over New Orleans Saints right now? For after what I seen, the only the only thing that I have going is the fact that the Saints play better when they're going up against elite competition. So I don't feel bad by saying that I got the Saints losing this game, uh, thirty four to thirty one. So um, not gonna not gonna sugarcoat it. Uh, not gonna say I ain't think about it. You know, I thought about. I thought about um I thought about the fact that you know maybe you know what I'm saying the Saints be able to put it together but like I said I'm I'm not going I'm not going to sit up here and just feel bad about it 34 to 31 Green Bay Packers beat the Saints so you know, y'all y'all don't want you know what I'm saying I'm not a I'm not a grandstander folks I'm sorry I'm not a grandstander I'm not a person that sit up here and say the Saints going to go 16 and 0 I think about every single game that I that I put out here. Okay, every single game I put out here, I have you know what I'm saying. I think about it. So until the Saints go out here and they prove, and I and I hope I'm wrong. You know, it's not like I, I wish that I'm, I'm right. I hope I'm wrong. But I got I got the Green Bay Packers beating the Saints 34 to 31. I feel like the uh, I feel like Aaron Rodgers is probably going to throw about three touchdowns. I feel like Aaron Jones he's not going to run for 100 yards. Uh, but he might have a hundred uh, yards total uh, total offense, and I just feel like you have other guys that can be able to get involved. So, thirty four, thirty one. 
New Orleans, the New Orleans Saints will lose to the Green Bay Packers. Uh, so let me see. Before I go, let me get let me get some of y'all. Uh, let me get some of y'all scores. Elwood says WTF. Yep, that's right. Uh, somebody said, I guess crying emoji. I spat out my chicken. Uh, chicken hearing you say that. Uh, I'm going with Green Bay, bro. Sorry too. Who that nation? Uh, not so fast, my friend. Ty Montgomery to IR. Saints 21, Packers 12. <laughs> okay. We got Saints 31 to 21. I hope our Saints win, though. Me too. I hope they win too. But that's my score. <laughs> Don't count out the Saints. Hey, man, I can't have the Saints. Look, I'm not going to I'm not gonna sugarcoat, and I'm not going to say that they're going to win every game. That, if, if that what you think, if that's what y'all want to hear, <laughs> it's never going to happen. I'm going to give you my honest opinion. Keep in mind, I said I had the Saints going 11 and 5 this season. 34 to 10. Uh, I think it might be a close one. 27 23. Okay. Past 27, Saints 23. 31 27, Saints. Saints 35 to 30 on the last second touchdown. The Saints uh, 28. Okay. So what Green Bay going to have, Brian? Don't tape the game, TJ. Definitely ain't going to tape the game. Like I said, man, I hope I'm wrong. Like, I'm serious. I'm telling y'all the score what I, I feel like as far as the prediction, but I hope I'm wrong. You know, why would I want to see – why would I want to see the Saints lose? I'm just saying, like, looking at the way that the Green Bay Packers are playing right now, looking at how uh, explosive they are offensively, looking at uh, some of the plays that they have downfield, most of, the, most of the plays they're getting, they're getting in chunks. They're throwing the ball downfield. And what has been the Saints Achilles here over the past couple of weeks? When you throw the ball downfield, pass interference. So every time that you start throwing the ball downfield, those are like penalties that can work in the favor of the Green Bay Packers. So rather they getting field goals out the deal, rather they getting touchdowns out the deal, you know. So until the Saints can prove to me, so since I mean, until the Saints can prove to me that they can actually stop people going downfield on them on a consistent basis and they can cut down on the penalties. Why would I not, why would I uh, pick them, you know what I'm saying, to beat the Green Bay Packers who do everything well that the Saints can't stop? Uh, Let's see. Saints 28, Green Bay 23, 29-24, Saints win. Yep, but... That's my score, and I'm sticking to it, folks. I'm sorry if I disappointed a lot of people. I'm sorry if I got a lot of people upset, but I'm like I said, I, I never sugarcoat it with you, folks. I never sugarcoat you at all. I'm just not, just not how I operate, not, not how I work. So we're just gonna have to agree to disagree for this one. But I want to say thank you very much for tuning in to the State of the Saints podcast, and also check out the State of the Saints podcast pregame show on tomorrow afternoon. Uh, before the Saints game, and we're also going to have the post-game show uh, immediately following the New Orleans Saints game. So I'll be taking your calls. Uh, we can talk a little bit more about the game. And also, you can be able to tell me some of your prediction scores. And also, on tomorrow, uh, we're going to announce the winner that will receive a State of the Saints podcast custom-made mask from maskmarket.com, the official sponsor of the State of the Saints podcast. Uh, so uh, the only way that you can be involved in this contest, all you have to do is go to iHeart, Anchor FM, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, and follow one of the, uh, follow on one of those apps. Okay, follow the State of the Saints podcast and snapshot a picture of you following it, and uh, you put yourself in a running to win that free match. So, thank you all very much, and uh, I just want to say thank you very much. I hope you all have a good evening. Uh, night, morning, whenever you're watching this, like always, all I got to say is, who that? <laughs>